the central theme of fem feminism and immigration in this country. Thank you, Denise. Thank you. Thanks very much, and thank you for the invitation to um, address this evening's conference. Um, it seems that it will be um, days full of discussion at a very timely um, situation in Ireland, but also, I, I guess, lots of fun. Um, I'll miss Dan on the piano tonight, and that's something that I regret. No but thank you for taking the time at the opening of the conference to mark women and by inviting the Immigrant Council to mark migrant women in Ireland and their contribution um, in the week of International Women's Day. Um, what I wanted to do just before I, I focus my remarks on the feminization of migration is just to remind us, I suppose, a little bit of the history of migration to Ireland. And very often the perception is that it's only in recent times that we've had flows coming to and from the country. But they say that our patron saint Patrick was trafficked from Wales. Um, we know that our capital was founded by the Vikings. The majority language, in fact, came from our colonial power. And the rural population grew strong on a crop from overseas. And when a blight struck that crop, we went overseas ourselves. We went to the USA, we went to Canada, we went to Argentina, all across Europe to New Zealand and Australia. While we were going though, there were others coming and Jewish refugees were first of many to come to Ireland from pomegranates in Russia in the early 20th century. Then suddenly the trend changed again. We became the island that was more visited than visiting and many came to enjoy and were asked to come to help us with our economic miracle, the Celtic Tiger. We had many people coming to, to meet our labour needs. Then once again, Ireland changed drastically and dramatically, and we've entered a recession. And I don't need to remind any of the people here of the difficulties and challenges that we're facing. Um, Minister Gormley mentioned earlier a thousand people um, that are, are entering the DOE queues and unemployment. And the recent figures today from the, the CSO indicate that a percentage of those and a high percentage of those are indeed foreign workers. Um, and I suppose when you unpack those figures, it makes sense that many of the sectors that have been very seriously hit had a high percentage of foreign workers employed in them, like construction. And that many of those workers cannot indeed um, access social welfare unless they've been working, have a history of employment in the country for two years. But in some way, the spin in some of the media is indicating that they don't have a right to that social welfare. We know now that we have 420,000 foreign born living with us in Ireland. And so whilst a lot of the wealth has left the country, we believe that the wealth of diversity that they bring with us, that many will stay and, and we welcome that. When we break down the figures, and we don't have great figures in Ireland, but when we break down the data, we do see that the trends are changing again because of the recession. Not as many are coming. But when we look at the figures of 2008, what we see is that women migrating has increased from 40% to 68%. So indeed, we do look like we have a trend of feminization um, in Ireland. And again, I'd like to pay tribute to that and to the women that are coming and living amongst us because of International Women's Day. Um, we work a lot with, with migrants generally, obviously, um, but we work a lot with women migrants. And we started this work when we were set up. Uh, the former president, Mary Robinson, spoke at an initial conference for us, and she urged us to have a gender lens when we're looking at immigration form and the development of integration policies or policies that assist people to coexist together. And so we've taken and embraced that encouragement in our work. Um, we did a piece of research which echoed many of the findings in our services and the experience of the individuals coming to us. The research was carried out by Dr. Jane Pillinger and in fact was funded by the Equality Authority. So I really commend the Green Party on the strides that they've made in relation to the Equality Authority and welcome those achievements. The uh, research basically looked at the experience of the wide, diverse uh, migrant women coming to Ireland. And what really struck me about the findings, again echoing our experience, that the strength and power of the women coming to live in Ireland is, is phenomenal. However, it also highlights many of the problems, the discrimination, the exploitation, for some human rights violations, 
problems in integrating our belonging, the inequalities that some migrant women were experiencing. Um, and it also highlighted a whole range of policy issues um, that we've been working with, with yourselves actually on and many other um, political parties. What I'd like to do today is just maybe concentrate on three areas that we would really like the Green Party to continue to consider um, and, and maybe discuss over the weekend, but, but in the future. Um, the first is leadership and public debate. And I suppose our main concern at the moment about the public debate is how quickly the discourse has changed. It's very quickly shifted to them and us, who gets to say, who should stay, who deserves to be here, who's Irish. And I suppose what I'd like to propose tonight is not to have a them and us, but just to consider an us. Um, I'll give you an example. Recently, um, a Fianna Fáil backbencher called for restrictions to the work permit system. Anybody that knows the immigration system knows that those restrictions actually are in place and have been in place for a considerable time. And when you unpack actually restricting the work permit system further, we have to ask who are we talking about? Are we talking about the nurses that come and care for our elderly? Because we cannot fill those jobs domestically at the moment. Are we talking about the students that are here on work permits so that they don't have to um, access help from the state and that bring eight billion to our, uh, to our funds? Are we talking about people who are married to Irish nationals and want to come and live with their family? So when you actually unpack that statement, you can see that it's ill-informed. And the worry that it is, though, is that it's starting scapegoating, scapegoating the wrong people in the recession and also politically, politically point scoring. We would ask the Green Party to continue not engaging in the debate in that way and showing the leadership that you have over the last while in ensuring that the debate is informed um, and responsible. Um, one of our main concerns is that in a recession that people can very easily turn on what they perceive to be the other and that's where xenophobia and racism um, rears its ugly head. Another area that I'd like to highlight, I'd like to pay tribute, I suppose, and mark invisible women and young girls, again, nearing International Women's Day. Um, recently, we've done a piece of research which we will launch on the 16th of April that looks at the sex industry in Ireland. And what it really highlights within that sex industry is the huge layers of exp exploitation that women and young girls are experiencing. And I talk about women and young girls because it's particularly the sex industry. Human trafficking, um, men and, and boys are obviously victims as well. Um, it's really clear from the research and the exploration that we've done of that underbelly of Irish society that we are not responding in any way to the victims that meets our international obligations. We've signed up to international obligations, but we're really only providing a very narrow service to very few that fit a very restrictive definition of trafficking. We've given two official permits since June, since an administrative scheme was brought in in June. Now the Green Party have been extremely helpful in lobbying for that administrative scheme. And I guess what I'd urge you to do is go one step further. Um, one of the areas that you have a ministry around environment has the opportunity to provide those victims with safe accommodation, which is the first step in, in leaving uh, or exiting a very violent um, and exploitative uh, lifestyle. And so at the moment, the proposal is to house victims of trafficking and exploitation in the direct provision service. Many of you will know what that is, but really it's an it's a accommodation for asylum seekers that wouldn't be best practice across the world or across Europe. Best practice would be specialised housing that exists, that that's where the women and, children and young girls should go. We have those specialised housing here in Ireland, and they are willing and able and motivated to take those victims. The Department of Environment has to change its policy to facilitate that. And I would urge Minister Gormley and the Green Party to work with us in securing safe accommodation for those victims. Finally then, around immigration reform, many of you will be aware that there has been legislation going through the House for many years now, and the Green Party have absolutely been crucial um, in the discussion and the debate. 
um, around that and, and I pay tribute to um, the ministers and the deputies that really have engaged with organisations like the Immigrant Council. Um, there are specific measures again with the lens of women, women in situations of domestic violence, women trying to access family life and the right to marry. There's a whole range of issues that we've been lobbying on. And um, again, as the bill goes through the Shannad, I, I would urge members of the Green Party just to engage in the debate around it, to keep the level of the debate responsible, and to ensure that, again, because we're in a recession and incredibly challenging times, that we don't allow that to erode the rights of some that are living here. And I think the exemplary work that you've done in relation to the Equality Authority shows that this is a party that doesn't want that to happen. Finally, I suppose I couldn't let International Women's Day go by without a tribute to a very courageous mother and her two daughters, Pamela, uh, Jemima and Naomi. Pamela is fighting to stay in Ireland and um, to save her daughters from FGM. There's a lot of controversy around her case. There's a lot of disbelief around her case. For those of you who have heard her, she's very compelling. Um, Ireland has an opportunity to allow her humanitarian um, leave to remain. We've done it in similar circumstances. The Immigrant Council has had other cases. Um, Europe, I believe, have, are going to intervene and they've asked, are going to ask the government to consider a friendly settlement. Again, I would ask the Green Party to use their influence to, to try and show our humanity to this very courageous mother and her children. I'd like to end by thanking the Green Party for the work in the area of equality and particularly migration as that's my lens. Um, I would like to wish the 29% of you going forward in the local elections all the best, all the candidates all the best obviously, but on International Women's Day or International Women's Week, the 29% the best of luck. And I would particularly like to wish Tandai all the best as we had the privilege of working with her in our leadership programme and experience the wonderful qualities that she brings to Ireland and how she enriches and demonstrates the new Ireland. Thank you very much and I wish you a very um, fun-filled and successful conference.